Hi everyone, it's Dawn and I hope you're having a fantastic week. Today I have a subscriber requested video. They booked a cruise on the Emerald Princess and since I don't believe I've ever reviewed the Emerald Princess before, I said sure, let's make a video and that video's coming up right after this. So the Emerald Princess was built back in 2007, which makes it 11 years old right now. Uh, it's part of the Grand Crack class, which is the, the Ruby and the Crown would be categories of them as well. Uh, very close to the Caribbean Princess, except that Caribbean Princess has that huge lift in the back where it's very recognizable back to the nightclub with the long elevator in the back and you can see it in the back of the ship. It's, it's very recognizable where this has just more of a flat level in the rear. Uh, one of the great things that this ship does have that a lot of people are still loving is the fact that it still has that rear wake pool. With hot tubs, there's a little children's pool, wade pool off to the side as well where you can sit in the hot tub and watch the kids uh, in the pool and relax and watch that beautiful wake because let's face it, the wake pool's views are some of the most fantastic and relaxing on the ship when, when the ship's at sea. Uh, the, the ship itself went under refurbishment way back in 2012 and again in 2015, uh, which means it's about three years old since its last refurbishment. Uh, the last refurbishment was kind of maintenance and then they also added the Share restaurant by Curtis Stone. Uh, which is a great restaurant, a great addition. Uh, but one thing you'll notice on the ship is it's starting to show its age with its decor. Uh, it kind of needs a refresh. Uh, if you go into the bars and you go into some of the restaurants, not necessarily share because it's brand new, but the Crown Grill and uh, you know around the ship itself into the theater area, it could do with a nice brightening up and a refresh like they have on some of the other ships. That's not to say that it's run down and it's in bad shape. Uh, the maintenance is really well done on it. It's just, it's, it's showing its age. That being said, the restaurants on board are great. They still have the, the Salty Dog, of course, Crown Grill is on board as always, where you can choose uh, your cuts of steak. You have Curtis Jones Chef, uh, also the Chef Table is available on the Emerald Princess as well. You have the pizza, you have the burgers, uh, basically the food is covered, especially in the atrium where on one side you have Vines Wine Bar, if, if you would like to have a nice nightcap and relax um, with some symphony orchestra music in the atrium, or if you're just uh, two o'clock in the morning, you're not able to sleep and you're a little bit hungry, you can head on down to the International Cafe down below. It's open 24 hours a day in the, in the atrium. And there you can get sandwiches, you can get salads, and lots and lots of delicious pastries and treats and chocolates till you get a sugar rush that you won't be able to sleep the rest of the night either. So, But uh, the International Cafe on Princess is one of the main reasons a lot of people love Princess Dining. It's, uh, it's always highly, highly rated. As far as entertainment on board, there's a variety of entertainment that shows up in the atrium where you'll have piano players or you'll have a, a quartet uh, playing, uh, jazz playing. There'll be all kinds of music that will play in the atrium, as well as they have a couple nightclubs on board and Probably the best one if you're looking for some late night dancing and uh, cocktails would be the Skywalker's Bar because it has uh, a great atmosphere. It also has floor to ceiling windows with great views of the ocean and yeah, that's, a, that's one of the better places on the ship to get up there and get your groove on, <laughs> if you will. Another thing they have on board, of course, is the Princess Theatre, where they put on shows, featured entertainers. Uh, the last time I was on, they had Magic To Do was on board as their feature performance during the cruise. 
And they also have brought on board, board uh, Voice of the Ocean, which is, of course, simulated from the Voice TV show on TV, where guests audition to be on The Voice, and then they have a grand finale at the end. And some of the singers uh, just blow me away sometimes. They're amazing. Uh, and uh, some of them, they just have more nerve than I do to get up there. That's all I can say. I'm not a I'm not a karaoke guy, uh, unlike Tony there, <laughs> Lily De Loca. Uh, my voice would send people running in opposite directions. So let's just leave it at that. Another great part of entertainment that I love on Princess Cruises, as you all know, is at the Calypso Bar on the ship. They have the movies under the stars, the large projection screen, outdoor theater where they'll show concerts and. Sporting events and all, you know, they play FIFA on board uh, during the tournament, world tournament. So you can get the Super Bowl if you happen to be sailing during that week, NFL Sundays. All these things are played on the big screen as well as on every night you will normally see uh, a relatively recent movie playing from the theaters. Uh, so uh, my last cruise, I saw Wonder Woman, I saw the event, not the Avengers, sorry, I saw um, Justice League, I saw The Greatest Showman, uh, and a couple others that uh, were up for Academy Award nominations as well. So, Movies Under the Stars, one of my favorite things on board a Princess Cruise, and the Emerald is no exception. Another thing Emerald has that some of the other ships don't have is an actual mini putt. I know when I go on board and I'm up into ships like the Royal Princess, uh, they have like a putting area where you can lawn bowl a little bit as well, but it's not really a mini putt where the Emerald Princess has a mini putt area set aside, which is great for the kids on a sea day to get them up there and not necessarily always at the pool and running around. It's uh, some place for them to have some fun. Two last things about the Emerald Princess is all the pools are freshwater pools. So if you're hoping for salt water, uh, no, they're freshwater pools and hot tubs on board the Princess. Uh, they're quite refreshing. The hot tubs are actually hot, especially if you go to an Alaskan cruise, which is always nice. As you know, sometimes the cruise lines hot tubs are just kind of pools. So that's always a good thing. And lastly, Probably the only other negative I've ever heard about the Emerald Princess. The staff is rated quite well, the food is rated quite well, the accommodations are rated quite well, entertainment is good. What I hear uh, most often is uh, sometimes there's longer lines at main dining, especially if the dining time is between say 5.30 and 8 and you go at 6 or 6.30, which is the peak time, you may end up waiting about a half hour to get into your dining. Uh, that's probably one of the only drawbacks I heard, uh, other than the ship needing an overall new paint refresh and some brighter colors, maybe some brighter color carpeting, uh, something that just shines like the atrium shine in the Princess Cruises. I hope you like this video on the Emerald Princess. It's uh, it's not my favorite princess ship, but it's it's there's absolutely nothing wrong with the Emerald Princess at all. She makes for a great ship, and when I go to Alaska, she's definitely one of the ships I look at when I'm heading in that direction. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more tips, more tricks, more travel vlogs from around the world, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Until next time, have yourself a safe and a great vacation.